Lightroom has gotten so good to the point where you might not even need Photoshop anymore. In fact, Photoshop might be going extinct with the new features that Lightroom has just added to its masking. In this video, I'm gonna show you all the new features that are in Lightroom's new masking tool and how you can use them on your photos. The first example that we have here is a photo that I shot recently in Quebec, and we're just gonna jump through the editing because I'm gonna apply one of my presets to this photo and just scrolling through my list really quick. Black Pines kind of looks good. Cold Island looks good. But I think I'm gonna go with Crimson Range because it's designed to pull a lot of the reds which we have in the trees of this photo. And I think I'm just gonna make some quick tweaks to the highlights, the shadows. Looking at this photo, the first thing I'm gonna do is select the sky. Now this is something that already existed. You could select the sky in previous versions of Lightroom, but now just to kind of get us started, I'm gonna select the sky and drop the exposure on it, maybe just drop the highlights to bring more of those clouds back and then dehaze it just a little bit so I get a little bit more color. Now I'm gonna select the house and previously you could say select subject, but you were kind of relying on Lightroom to guess correctly. And you can see in this case, what it's done is it's over selected. It's selected the background, it's even selected part of this shed and this car and the other house in the background. And that's not what we want. So I'm gonna delete that mask. If I go back under masking, you'll notice that Lightroom now has an object selection method. And if I select it, it gives me two options. The first is to do a rectangular selection, which works really well for rectangular objects. But in this case, I'm actually gonna grab the brush selection, the brush selection, and I can just set the size of my brush. I can set it to be bigger or smaller. And then really quickly, I'm just gonna paint over the area of this house that I want to be selected. And I'm not being super accurate, but you can see really within a second, it pretty much nailed the selection of this house. But maybe you're looking at that going, well, that was, that was too easy. We need something that's harder. That's where we've got this photo. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the object selection again, and we're just gonna paint over areas of this camera and kind of hope that Lightroom does a somewhat decent job of getting all the portions of the camera. And you can see it's actually done pretty well. Now it missed a slight portion of this, whatever that is, and it missed this little piece, but that's easy enough to fix. Instead of having to go back with a brush and manually do it, all we have to do is keep adding object selections until this entire object is selected. So I'm gonna go back to add, I'm gonna select object again, I'm gonna paint over that, boom, we've got that selected. Rinse and repeat for the rest of this object, but you'll see, even if I go to some of the more challenging portions, like this cord over here, and I'll just be really quick and sloppy with it. In a matter of a second, it pretty much got that cord exactly right. So I'm gonna go through this, I'll speed it up to show you just how quick and simple it is to now select complex objects. With that object selected, maybe I want the exposure to be a bit brighter. So all I have to do is come in here, bump the exposure, maybe drop the highlights, maybe boost the clarity. Now all of a sudden, something that may have taken me 20 minutes in the past, with a matter of one minute of work, I get a good result. And of course, you can also duplicate and invert the selection. Let's say maybe the background's a little bit too sharp for my liking. I can just grab this, say duplicate and invert mask. Now it selects everything but the camera, so my background, and I could go, you know, maybe negative exposure, negative sharpness, and negative clarity. Now all of a sudden, that camera in that photo stands out a lot more. But maybe you're not shooting photos of objects, you're shooting photos of people. Well, let's jump to this photo, and again, I'm gonna quickly apply one of my presets. In this case, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with Cold Island, but I need to tweak it a little bit because it's a bit too dark. So I'm gonna go to my exposure settings, I'm gonna bump the exposure, I'm gonna bump the shadows, and then bring down the highlights. Previously in Lightroom, if you wanted to select a person, you had to use subject selection, and it selected the whole person. But now, if you look, there's actually a people function, and you can see person number one, it's already pre-selected the model. But if I click on her, watch what happens. It goes even further to detect all of her individual features. So I can go face skin, body skin, eyebrows, eye, sclera, whatever, 
whatever that is, the whites of your eyeballs, the iris, the lips, the teeth, the hair. It does a really good job at that initial selection. And if you just wanna do quick edits with a minimal amount of retouching, this can be a really fast way to touch up your photos. But maybe that's not impressive enough for you. Maybe you have a photo that has multiple people in it. That's where we get to a photo like this. And I'm gonna quickly just do some adjustments for exposure pick one of my presets at random. Maybe I'm looking at this photo going, the subject is just a bit too dark. So in this case, I'm gonna go under my masking and you can see it's already found the people in this photo. It says person one, person two, person three. So I can create a mask for each of those, just like I did for the last photo, or I can say all people. And then it just does one mask where all the people are selected. And of course I can say entire person, or I can kind of sort through and say face skin. You know, we look like we're wearing a, a face mask or maybe we're Shrek or something. I, I don't know, but I'm going to say create a mask for the entire person. You can see it's done a pretty good job. It missed some of Will's backpack here, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to say that's okay. I'm going to grab the exposure, bump the exposure, maybe bump the shadows, bump the contrast, lower the blacks a little bit. I hope this has helped you as much as I know it's helped me. It's completely sped up my workflow and taken out a bunch of steps where in the past, maybe I'd have to brush something or spend 20 minutes like doing fine detailed work. Now Lightroom's built in AI, magic that it has is just incredible. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead, give it a thumbs up or leave a comment down below. Which of these masking features are you most interested in using? And if you wanna see another video like this, I'll leave some right here that you can jump into if you wanna see more Lightroom editing tutorials. And until the next one, go shoot photos.